Hi YouTube, my name is Glenn, better known as Beauty by Lenoria on all of my social media platforms. And now we're just gonna go ahead and start off with the first thing that I like to do when I start my makeup. I always start off with my eyeshadow primer. Today's eyeshadow primer is actually a dupe for the NARS eyeshadow primer, but this one is the CoverGirl Lid Lockup Eyeshadow Primer, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Your eyeshadows won't crease, they'll stay true to color, and also it actually gives your eyebrows that soap eyebrow look. I carry whatever eyeshadow primer that I'm using, not concealer, <laughs> but actual eyeshadow primer. So whatever eyeshadow primer I'm using on my eyes, I actually carry that up to my eyebrows to, to actually prime this area. The reason why I do that is because it avoids that shiny eyebrow look that can happen sometimes throughout your day. And this one dries pretty quickly. Now I'm not a, going to put any primer underneath the eyes just yet because I'm not sure about the fallout that may happen and what I may have to wipe up. So I'm going to leave this down here unprimed. Before your eyebrows actually lock into place, you want to go ahead and grab your eyebrow brush that you will use for to put your product on and also with the spoolie. What you're going to do, you're going to take and you're going to go ahead and brush this product through. Now if you can see what's happening in between this eyebrow that still looks like what happened Lynn. And you'll see this eyebrow, you can already see the hairs are already standing up. I'm sorry, I didn't even tell you. We're actually using the e.l.f. brush for your eyebrows. Comes with a spoolie on one end and a brush on the other end where you can apply product. This is a beautiful brush and it's only $3. Do the eyebrows. Now, if you follow my Instagram, you already know my eyebrow product is always the same. Um, I love this eyebrow product. It is creamy but it's not too slippery and it's not too waxy or stiff. We're talking about the, the ColourPop Brow Pencil and this is the one in Jet Set Black. <laughs> this is what it looks like. And then we're gonna go ahead and start filling in the eyebrows. What I do is I'll go ahead and trace and actually draw the actual shape of my eyebrows and then I'll go in and make brush hair type strokes in the front and in the back I'll start to fill it in. So we'll go And if you mess up a little bit on this step, don't worry because we're going to come back in with concealer and do a little cleanup to actually make sure the brow shape is the way we want it to be. Now that you actually have the actual shape done on the actual brow, you kind of want to step back just a little bit and just look at it and make sure that's what you want. That's the type of shape you want to have going on. And then from there, you'll start to fill in the actual tail and actually do in the front. So we'll go ahead and do start filling in the front first. And I like to draw my hairs first going this direction and then again going that way. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a crisp. So when I go in and spoolie it out, it makes it look more natural. And as we start to get to the arch of the brown to the tail, I'll start to draw down. And I'll also start to pull it up from the bottom. And now we'll go ahead and spoolie them so we can start to blend the product out because you can't leave the product like this. You want to go ahead and blend it out. Okay, so for the eyeshadow, we're going to go ahead and utilize the Pat McGrath Labs, the Met Limited Edition Mothership Version 5. And here are the actual shades we're about to use and get into with this actual palette. I don't actually always set my eyeshadow primer because when you leave it unset, the shadows actually stick to it more and actually give it a more vibrant color. And you're gonna go in first with a patting motion and then go in with the blending motion. So we're gonna go ahead and use one of the lighter shades, the Entrapment. We're gonna use this shade right here, Entrapment. And I always knock off the excess. And you're gonna go in and just pat. Just dipped into the Pure Midnight Masquerade palette that we got in last month's BoxyCharm. And I just dipped into Hidden Secret, this shade right here, because that was going on a little too dark for me to help with the transition. So I'll take and I'll blend this over top and get my perfect transitional mix.
And I'm bringing it pretty far in on the inside. And I'm blending up towards that burr bone and out. So it'll start to wing out. So you can already see it starting to wing it out. Just keep blending. Because blending is everything. And the reason why you'll see me dip back and forth is because, one, they're both highly pigmented. And when products are really highly pigmented, you just want a quick little bloop, that's it. And you'll tap off the excess, and then you'll just go in, and it's easier and more controllable if you build up this way. Because if you just go in with a strong amount of color, it becomes unnecessarily hard to blend that out. So we have our transitional color laid down. I'm happy with the actual transition and the blending of the transition. Uh, BH Cosmetics, it's my Ray Ray brush. And it's the, it's my Ray Ray number eight. <laughs> and from the Pure Masquerade palette, Midnight Masquerade, we're gonna be using Twilight. So we'll go in. It's only because there isn't a shade I can use to blend down my brow bone into that transition in the actual Pat McGrath palette. And then you'll go back in with the brush you were using to blend in your transition, and now you can go back over that. And that'll give you a seamless brow bone highlight into your transition. So for the next brush, we're going to pick up a Sigma Taper Blending E40. And we're going to go into the shade Extreme Aubergine. Right here. We'll go ahead and go into that from the Pat McGrath Mellowship 5. Again, guys, remember to always tap off the access. And we're going to use this to deepen the actual crease and start to build on the actual out V. So you'll see me go in and place the product, keeping it low in your actual crease. Then once you have it placed, small blending circles to blend that in. And now you can go ahead and go on back in with your transitional mix that you was doing and add that right back in. Sometimes as you're going through doing eyeshadow looks, you use a whole lot of blending back and forth, back and forth in between your two colors because blending in one color can sometimes lessen the vibrancy of the other color. And you just want to bring it back in. And there we have it blended blown out. No. You want to make sure as you're blending you get rid of any and all harsh lines. So you want to make sure you don't have harsh lines all over the place. Okay. So as we have the base done with the actual looks, I'm pretty happy with that one. Now I know I'm not going to keep it all matte. I know I'm going to be going in for some type of color because these are too beautiful. They are opal and we're going to put it right here. We're going to use as many shades from this palette as possible so we can really utilize the palette and really get a great look from it. We'll be using the Elf Matte Magic Mist set just in case we need it. Using a Juvia's Place. A Juvia's brush and this is from their turquoise set it actually doesn't say the actual brush name so this is what we're gonna use we're gonna go ahead and kind of cut this crease a little bit and we're gonna be using the ColourPop no filter concealer and fair zero we're gonna go ahead and cut this crease because of the look that just came to mind that I felt would be beautiful with this go ahead and do this down the center look up wherever it touched to how high that needs to go and what you'll do now is you'll go in <clears throat> with an eyebrow brush. And this is the Jessup 322. This is a brow line brush. But we're going to show you exactly how you fix a mistake like that when that happens. And I'm dipping into the Extreme Aubergine and also Disobedient in the Pat McGrath palette. So we're going to show you how you'll fix a mistake like that. While it's still wet, you'll just go in and clean it up. And you'll see it creates a dark line. And you're going to use uh, Sigma Blending E36. This is what it looks like. 
to go in and you're gonna turn it up. So you don't blend into the white, you're just blending that. Then you'll go back into your original brush that you had that you were busy blending with. That still has a little bit of the product left on it that you're able to take. And now you'll go ahead and blend that all together again. And the only reason why you happen to do this is because you messed up. Now we're going to go ahead and take a just a 233 cream shader brush. And the first shade that we're going to go into from the palette is going to be the VR Fire Opal. And now we're going to go into the area right here where we can blend that back part. And actually, I want to go ahead and take a little bit of the deeper colors and bring those in. Now we'll take and we'll put this down right here. Since this shade is more of a topper, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it and see what happens. And all we're doing is taking Extreme Aubergine and Disobedient and we're using it to blend that out in. So that's the way it's looking right now, a hot mess, but our eyeshadow looks a hot mess until you get further into the process. Now that same brush that we were using, Flip it over to the clean side, and we're going to go into Astro Luna Gold, the gold right here. Same thing, we're just going to go in regular to see if we need to add anything. These are eyeshadow toppers, so you see there is some fallout. I didn't get too much fallout from the mats, but from those, I did get fallout. The eyeshadow toppers with Mica Glitter, you should probably expect that. And then we'll go back in with the first brush. And we'll blend around that to really soften that line. That happened when we went in with the darker color. And you're blending up to create a cat eye. So that's the blending right now. That's where we are with the blending. And we're done with that eye. So we're going to go ahead and complete the other eye. And all that fallout, you just clean up. And this is why I didn't farm anything underneath. And this inner one, you just take that. So it doesn't show any harsh lines. And that was just a clean brush. This is just a 227, the like soft definer. It's just a clean brush that we're using to go in and do that with. And now we'll just go ahead and repeat. Same thing on the other eye. And we're going to leave the eyes alone for just a moment. As far as eyeshadow. Now we're going to go ahead and start with the eyeliner. It'll start to pull the whole look together. Because right now it looks a little crazy. But the look will get pulled together with actual eyeliner and the other things that we're about to go ahead and do to it. So for eyeliner, we're going to go ahead and do one of my favorite ones. This is a new one for me. This is going to be the e.l.f. eyeliner in black. And we're going to take and line the eyes. Now if you mess up a little bit on the wing, it's okay because you can clean it up when you start to do your foundation and your actual um, concealer. So you want to look and make sure that your wings are even. And they are. I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to use the Rimmel Scandalized Waterproof Cold Kajal Eyeliner. And this one is in black. So we'll go ahead and use this one. So you want to go ahead and kind of warm it up on the back of your hand. So it's easier to do it. In tight lining, we're going to do the top. So that 
lashes we put on will blend in. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the bottom. The worst thing about my eyes, of my eyeshadow and everything, is I have watery eyes. So this has this tenant this I have a tendency to have these type of problems happen because I have super watery eyes. We're gonna use the Elf F Aqua Primer Mist. Looks like this. And we'll go ahead and prime with this. <laughs> Get sticky as it dries, but it's fine. Now, after you've let your primer dry down just a little bit, it kind of gives you a natural radiance. Do you can try to, see, you can kind of see it coming through a little bit. Now, I'm actually going to go in with the physical primer because I have oily skin. So, with oily skin, it's always steps in process. Now, I didn't show you what I'm using. I'm using the Lancome Matte Pre and Matte. So, I take about that much. And this is really going to go into the areas where I have a hard time with my oils. It'll go all over. But I'm really making sure I get into those areas where my oil <laughs> likes to go and be super disrespectful. Well, let me be great. Because I have oily skin, I also have to go in and actually set that down. So, I always set my primer with a loose powder. So, the powder we're using today is the Innisfree No Sebum Moisture Powder. This is a really matte powder. So, it's really going to help just make sure that the areas that you needed to stay set down were actually set down. And I actually just use this. We're going to use a crown brush. It came in one of our sets that we got from um, BoxyCharm. But I'll just take this and I work out of my top. So I'll take and put some powder in the top, shake off the excess, and I'll go with the areas where I know my oil normally comes through and I'll set that. This is also a good trick if you're looking for that blurring effect with your skin, take and press the powder over your primer into the area where you have huge pore problem, pore problems. For me, that's my cheeks and my nose. And I also set down my smile lines. So this will help keep the product from settling and cracking into these lines. You can also Put eyeshadow primer down your actual frown lines. That'll also help your foundation from settling into those lines. I don't put it directly underneath my eyes because my eyes aren't dry. The under eye area isn't dry or anything like that. But you don't need a whole lot of powder underneath that area. Even with oily skin, you don't want to dry that part of your face out. And this is the reason why I said we'll come back and do the brows because of the way that I do my skin, I get powder everywhere, anywhere. So now that you have that on, you'll take and dust off the excess. And that's the only time I actually use this powder. It's my Ray Ray, introduced us to love. It's my Ray Ray, love Ray. Congratulations on the baby. Um, introduced us to this powder and I actually love the powder but the one thing that I will tell you is you do not want to use this on top of your foundation or as a final setting or anything like that because this powder will give you horrible flashback but in small doses you'll see it automatically smooth the skin see that that's amazing that's the reason why I love that powder and use that powder you'll go ahead and put all of your other products on top and when you're finished and you're ready to take your photos to put them on Instagram or to send your family members or Facebook or when you're going out getting ready to turn up with your friends for the night, you won't have any flashback. And the goal here is to have flawless makeup without flashback. Flashback is when you take a picture and you have that ghost-like reflect in the picture. Yes, yeah, not cute. So we're about to go in and apply the actual foundation. And my foundation mix that I'm doing right now is just a mix that I had of like 
six or seven different foundation samples that I had actually got from Sephora that were too light, too orange, too red, too dark. Didn't quite work out. The undertones were off. I go get samples from Sephora of my actual foundation that I'm trying to get. And then I'll get one that I think is my exact color, one that's a little lighter, and one that's a little darker. So that way I can see whether or not I can find an exact shade. Nine times out of ten, I can't I always have to match. Or if I need to mix two shades to get my perfect shade. Because I am in C45 in MAC, from time to time, my skin can run a little warmer in the summertime. But throughout the year, for some odd reason, I'll start to get oliveness come through in my skin tone. So that really throws off as far as my warm foundations or my cooler foundations. And sometimes I have to find something a little more neutral with just a little bit of golden. So this is the mix that I did. I put it in the Bum Bum So Generio container because it was the perfect container. I'm using the Real Techniques brush. And this is the Conceal and Correct brush. And I'll use this brush as I go in and apply the most product in the center of your face where you need the most correction. I don't color correct. I don't color correct underneath my eyes. I don't color correct with the acne scars that are healing. I don't correct the darkness around my mouth. I don't. I'm a woman of color and I have hyperpigmentation where my neck is darker than my actual face and body. I don't color correct. Like the foundations for the most part should do that for me. And I like to use the foundation brush to put it on at first. And again, you're going to put it in the areas where you need the most coverage. Anything that needs color correcting, that's where you're going to go ahead and put the bulk of your foundation. And I like to take and go back around the eyebrows to get rid of the halo. And it looks a little orange, but it'll calm down. It'll definitely calm down, so don't be too alarmed with that. Now, after I finish doing that, what I'll do is I'll take a foundation brush. And we're going to use... The Koki Cosmetics, the 618. And what I like to do is, I like to take and spray the brush. And I'll go ahead and get my face one more spray with the primer spray, with the Elf primer spray that we used. And this is really going to help move that product around. I'll take and do it in my hand like this to make sure the wetness is there. <laughs> and we'll go there. Be careful when you get close to your eyes. And I do stamping motions. And make sure you bring it down and around under your chin and down your neck. Because you want it to blend in. And don't be scared to go into the hairline. Well, I really don't have to go in too much on this side because my braids come down to cover it. So I'm not really worried about that. Take and squeeze to get in between those eyebrows. And if you're like me and you start to see your eyes are starting to water again, just go ahead and catch them. And you want to make sure that you got the product blended out pretty good. And this is a full coverage foundation. So as you can see, it evened out my skin tone. You don't see any more of those acne scars or anything. See? And my neck has hyperpigmentation, but what I'm matching is my face to my chest. Now, what I like to do is I'll go in there and I'll go ahead and use a wet beauty blender. It's already been wet. So what I'll take and do is the butt part. I'll take and bounce and that's going to give you a seamless look without shearing out your initial coverage in any areas where you may have had too much but a brush didn't actually pick it up going back over and doing this see it immediately helps bring down the shine of the foundation the foundation is going to dry matte and it didn't pick up too much product but it helped Blend everything out and make it look airbrushed. Now that we are finished with that part of it, 
we'll go ahead and go in and do concealer. And for me, since this is actually coming across, it'll be darker. As it dries down, it'll get a little bit darker. So you can see from my skin what I'm matching to that. It's a little orange, but again, it'll start to dry down. So we're going to use the Maybelline Super Skin Camouflage Concealer. And I'm using the shade Medium Deep. And I just put it right here because it'll spread out to the different places that I need it. But this is where I want the lightness brought in on my face. And the, user, the reason why I use this shade and I keep it centralized to this area is because, get a little bit of a reverse contour going down here. We're gonna take the other part and just work a little bit on the chin, just a little bit on the chin so it brings light back to the chin. And we'll go ahead and blend out everything else and let that have a chance to just sit just a little. See, I don't have a big forehead, but I wanna make sure, I'm just flipping over using the butt that had the foundation to help blend out that concealer. And you see, it helps bring light. So you start to see it's starting to adjust and bring more light. Now I'm gonna leave that alone and let that get a little bit thicker under my arm, my eyes. But in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and do just a little bit of contour. And this is, let me show you, this is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define in C16. And we're gonna use this just around the outside, and we're gonna bring it in to help do those jaws. Now, I have naturally big cherry cheeks, so I don't drop mine too low on the sides when I'm going in. I bring it up a little bit higher, because if I drop it too low, it'll make my, fa my face look like it's older and sagging, like not collagen, not youth. So you, you, for me, with my face shape, with the cheeks, I kinda keep my products up a little bit higher, so that way it keeps my face lifted higher. And on the other side too, now I'll take the tip and go down. And the reason why I do this is because I have a baby nose. Uh, as a child, my bridge never developed. So it's just a little button nose. I don't have the bridge. We're going to go ahead and take the new Sigma brush that I just got in today. This is the Sigma E50. And we're gonna use this to go ahead and go in here and do the nose. And you're gonna take the nose contour from the eyebrow down the side of your nose. Actually, before we do that, we're actually gonna go in and actually blend out this contour. Before it dries in place and it becomes too hard for me to blend. And blend up and then create the natural contour, see? I already have those high cheekbones, so I don't really need to contour. But if you're trying to pull a full look together, you definitely want to go ahead and add dimension back to your face because foundation will completely flatten out your canvas, which is your face. And you just want to make sure you bring that dimension back. I don't do contour the way most people do contour. I go in and under, put a line here and a line here and across here. So that's what it's look like. Now we're gonna take and blend this out. And we're staying low and under. The reason why we're staying low and under is because we're creating a stronger jawline down the neck like how I would normally do. And you're creating this shadow and you're connecting it to the contour that came down here. And we are using a Juvia's Place J121 Angled Contour Brush. And I use that to feather. To make sure we don't have any harsh lines, but to make sure you can sink right into where it should be. <laughs> okay, and there we go. Okay, now we're going to go back in, and we're going to take the sponge, and bring it down. And we go ahead and take the butt and blend that into your foundation. 
bring it up and you get into the dark areas right there in the corner on the inner corner right here y'all and because I let it sit and dry while I moved on the other steps it gets a little tackier and a little thick but just blend it out so you don't have any lines and now you're gonna go in and fix this nose contour same concealer and that helps blend it out now we're gonna go ahead and powder the concealer you want to look up and make sure you don't have any lines I mean we're gonna go into black radiance and set and you're just setting all of the areas you highlighted. The True Complexion Loose Setting Powder, and this is in Banana. So now that we have that sitting there and we're working on that, now we're going to come back in with the Morphe E42. And we're going to go ahead and use the Cody Airspun. To go ahead and set the rest of the face. I'll take and put it in. See all that powder? Now I'll take and tap it off into the top. and set the rest of the face. And make sure when you're setting your face, don't forget to go back in and set your neck and stuff. Now we'll go ahead and go in. <laughs> Yes, it looks crazy. But now we're going to go in here with Laura Mercier Translucent Medium Deep. And we're going to knock all this off and bring the color back. So I'll take the same brush that I was using. And you're going to take and sweep the excess away. The Cody Airspun smells so good. Now, in bronzing my skin, I'm going to use the same brush that I had before. I'm going to take and use the CoverGirl Queen Collection in Ebony Bronze. The one they did with Queen Latifah. Queen. And that's in Ebony Bronze. And I'm also going to use the L'Oreal Paris, the Glam Bronzer, and this is in 03 Deep. And I'll take and mix both of them together. I'm going to go ahead and use my Sigma Large Powder F3. And I'll go into both of them. I'll go back and forth into both. I'll get most of the brush coated in the L'Oreal. And take just a little bit of the Queen. As you can tell, this is cooler. This is a whole lot warmer. But now you'll just go in and go ahead and finish carving out. And all you're doing right now is just bringing that color back. Well, under the little up. Helps with that whole lip pout. <laughs> and if I need just a little bit more, we'll go in. And then you want to take and make sure you get that blended out. Now, because I'm applying my products in the upward motion, I never really have to go back in and clean up underneath here. It's not something I necessarily have to do, but I'll show you what that looks like when you actually do that. You just want to give it a little bit more chiseling, especially if you've been doing it and you kind of got out of control. Just go in and chisel it down. Now, I don't take and bring mine all the way down to the mouth because, again, my high cheeks and the way my high cheeks are set up. I'll look like the Joker. 
if I bought that all the way in. I've seen girls bring it all the way in. I, my face shape won't allow me to do that. So I stay in my lane. E42 and brush it away. And right now your face is looking real powdery, but that's okay. We got something for that. We're gonna go in with the actual blush next. And for blush, we're gonna go ahead and use my Pretty Vulgar Cosmetics Make Them Blush 111 in Prime Vixen. It's a pretty, super bright fuchsia pink. You're always going to go in. I'm going in with the Real Techniques by Sam and Nick. This is their cheap pop first. Love this collection. You're going to go in, get rid of the excess, and with your cheeks, you're going to look up into your cheeks and make sure you start from the back up high and go in. And I always start out with just a little first, starting out, because the highlighter is about to come and I always finish my blush after I apply my highlight. Okay, so for highlighter, we're gonna do two highlighters. We're gonna take Juvia's Place, and this is the one, the Nubian by Juvia. This is a loose highlighter in Nefertiti. And we're also going to take the crayon, the crayon case, and this is Glocane. This is their highlighter powder. And you're going to see how pretty they both are when I mix them together. I'm using my Sigma High Cheekbone Highlighter Brush. This is the FO3. I'm going to take whatever's in the cap and get it all over the brush. Loose highlighters don't need a lot. And I hit the high points. And I also bring it down on my actual cheeks. Now that you got the base down, you're going over with more. See? <laughs> and I'll take and brush some right here underneath the highlight. And then I'll go right here above my brow. With whatever's left, not a whole lot. But this will give your face that, see? That pretty shine from up here. Now, I would take it down to my cheeks because looking straight on, see the shine on my cheek? I love I love that part. But yeah, this is what you do with this one. And you're going to follow and do the same thing on the other side. Now, even though I have large pores and texture, and typically with large pores and texture, you definitely want to stay away from putting highlight on your cheeks. I'm going to show you a way that you can do it, and it's still pretty. And then I'll take my brush and whatever's on my brush. Now, I'm going to go in now that that highlighter is there. We're going to do something else to it as well. But I'm also going to go back in and finish my nose contour. I'm going to take the L'Oreal again. And I'm taking it on a Jessup 142 Concealer Buffer Brush. And I'm just going to go down my nose. And we can take and finish that out. And there we go. Cute little button nose with a little bit of highlighter. Put just a little bit more. And I'll go on my hands with this one. When I told you I like to marry my blushes and my highlighters together, now we're about to go do that. Just go over it. Keep it in a pie and in the back. Take the excess product and wipe it off. Then go in. Now we're going into a buffing motion. And you're just buffing. The contour that you had go up. And the highlighter you had come down, the blushes in the middle. Just take and marry everything together. I put mine up high in the back and bring it down and around. Smile. 
and you don't know exactly where to place it. In with the crayon case glocane and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that but before I do that we're gonna set this down because at this point everything that we needed for the base is done and ready to be set and we're using the Lancome fix it forget it setting spray helps make helps make your makeup last for 24 hours But as it's drying, you want to and what you're going to do is start to marry and mesh everything together. You want to go to the side of your beauty blender that didn't have any product. Not the one you use concealer, but the side that doesn't have any product on it. And now you want to go ahead and start blending this in. And this is how you get that look on your skin to where everything is just blended in, matching, and seamless. And it also helps to set in the setting powder and you will start to get a seamless look remember when I was telling you I have large pores and texture right here and how I get rid of that is the setting trick spray your face with your setting spray I always have to use something that prolongs my makeup because I have woolly skin preferably something that helps mattify if I haven't already done mattifying steps prior to this point but as it's drying, I go in and press it with my damp beauty blender. Now, while the skin is still a little tacky, we're going to go into whatever's in the top of that glow cane with the crayon case and watch. And one more time to set that down. And all we are doing with that one is just setting down that highlighter again now with the concealer side the side with no product because remember the butt is what we did the foundation with so this side <laughs> this side is what i'm going to use for it and just go over it. and this is why i haven't finished the eyebrows yet because we're about to get back into those so now that we have that done with the actual blush <laughs> And we're good to go there. Now we can go ahead and step back into the actual eyes. But now we're going to go ahead and finish off the eyebrows. Now finishing off the eyebrows, we're going to go ahead and take, this is the e.l.f. And this is their eyebrow gel and also an eyelash mascara. Here's a great makeup hack and trick to help save you money. If you can't afford some of the higher-end Anastasia Beverly Hills Benefit Brow, if you can't afford the $18, $20, $25 brow gels, ColourPop has a great eyebrow gel called the Eyebrow Boss. I love that one, but this is only $2. And you can use clear mascara in your eyebrows or the actual clear eyebrow. Either one, it doesn't matter. I always use the clear mascara in. You'll take, because you've had all this powder and everything come across your eye, your eyebrows, so you're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. So you're gonna go in and stand your brows back up, and this will also get rid of all the powder that came across your brows. See, now that we have that done, now we can also go ahead and head back into our eyes just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and redefine the outer part of the eyeliner that may have got just a little lost in translation with everything that we were doing. And from time to time, if my eyebrow tail isn't as dark as I want it to be with very little product left on the elf eyeliner, this is a trick that I do. I'll go in and just redefine those edges. And because it's such a small brush, it'll give me hair-like strokes. And it gives me a whole lot of eyebrow hairs. Now, we're about to go ahead and stage the eyes. The bottom part of the eyes are what we're gonna work on now. And with working on the bottom part of the eyes, we're gonna go ahead and fill in the lower lash line that we left until this step. So my lower lash line, I'm trying to think with the eyes being so busy, if I wanna just go in with a regular color, if I wanna do something slightly different. Okay, 
So I'm gonna go in with the first round that we were using. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Entrapment from the Pat McGrath palette. So I'm gonna use Entrapment and I'm using it on this Jessup 226 smudger. But we're gonna use this as a smudger and we're gonna smudge underneath. So we can go ahead and tie the look together. And I like to bring mine pretty low. A trick I learned by getting rid of all those wrinkles. See all those wrinkles and everything that's going on? Well, when you bring your eyeshadow a little bit lower, it actually helps camouflage that. And my eye is watering, guys. Turn it to a side so you can get a better blend. And you'll start to see it's already starting to come together on this side versus what the eyes looking like coming together on that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the steps to the other side of the eye. And then I decided that I wanted to do a pop of color. So I'm going in with Showtime from the Pyramid Night Masquerade palette. We're going to go into this. And all I did was take and clean my brush off. Same brush. I got it from the Crayon Case, their version of the Verona color switch. And all you have to do is when you're doing multiple eyeshadow looks, just take and clean your brush off and your brush is ready to be used for the next color. And then we're gonna go in with that shade, guys. And we're gonna put it on the inside. It's just a little color, see? Just a little bit, not too much. Okay, now that we're done with that, I wanna go ahead and pull that one, that look that we have right there sitting on the top I want to go ahead and pull that into the bottom as well. So we're going to go ahead and go into the Astral Luna Gold. And we'll take and put a lot of it on the brush. And we'll take and wet that. And now we're going to go into the inner corner. Go ahead and do lashes first. With this look... I want some really pretty kind of flared out lashes so we're gonna do the Coco lashes and this is in Venus I only use two different types of eyelash glue because of what works to my eyes not only do I have oily eyelids but I also have watery eyes and from time to time it, watery eyes do not make do not sit well for actual makeup looks they just don't so what we're gonna do the eyelash glue that I use is always from house of slashes is all so we're gonna go ahead and put them up to the eyes and make sure they fit it's a little too long on that side and a little too long on that side so what I'll go ahead and do now is I'll go ahead and trim the edges off. So it'll fit my eye better because if your eyelashes are too long, they can actually start to have the opposite effect, which can make your eyes look droopy. And we definitely don't want anything making our eyes after all of this hard work to go in and make them look droopy. So we're gonna go ahead and apply the glue. So while we're letting that lash glue dry, we're gonna go ahead and get into mascara, guys. But we're gonna be using the Bad Girl Bang by Benefit Cosmetics. This is my favorite mascara for both top and bottom. Any powder that may have gotten trapped in your eyelashes while you were busy doing your makeup, this gets rid of that. And so we'll let that set and then we'll go back in with another layer. The next layer that I'm gonna use specifically on my bottom lashes are gonna be Ulta Beauty Limited Lashes, the Lengthening Volumizing Mascara in the Orange Tube. This is fun. phenomenal, phenomenal. And you want to have a mirror to where you're able to look up into it, okay? So I'm going to pull my mirror closer so I can actually look up into it, guys. And you go down to the lash line and you put your lashes on. Do not put them on your actual lashes. 
and you can see if you're putting them on right if you have a mirror underneath you look down into the mirror and I always go back in and just press them down and now I'll take in I always use my fingers for this to marry the fake lashes with my real lashes. So I not only use and take and press that down even more, but I take and I push them up. And once they're on, you're just gonna take and push them up. Okay guys, so once your lashes are on, you're pretty much done with that step. There's nothing else you'll need to do with that actual step. Now I do take and press mine up of course, my eyes are choosing to water right now. But I'll take and I'll just press mine up because it's still drying, still in the drying process. It's just tacky enough to actually stay on right now. I'll take and push them up. And that's what we have. I have a deep look for my lips that I can do to actually match my top. See what I was saying when I was saying... I didn't need to do all of that underneath there because my lemonade braids cover it. So now that we're done with that part, okay. So now we can go ahead and do our lips. I went ahead and pulled out of my collection a deep, a deep, deep, deep red. Um, I'm using the NYX Liquid Suede Cream Lipstick and I'm using the shade Cherry Skies. This is one of my favorite formulas that NYX came out with. And I'm actually going to line my lips. I'm not a big fan of lip liner. I'm just not. I don't see the point for me personally when I could just use a darker lipstick to line around and then marry it in with that. That's typically my hack and trick to make it a little bit quicker. Unless it's something specifically where I'm needing a lip liner to really get crisp edges around it. But I'm using the La Rock Pro. Liquid lipstick, and this is in Black Cherry, and this came in one of our boxy charm boxes. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and go in and start my lips. And I'll step back, and I'll go ahead and look at my lips and just make sure that they're even. And if you mess up on your edges, it's okay. I'm gonna show you how to go back in and fix that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with this one. I blend the edges, the edges with my fingers. Okay guys, so this is my final completed look using the new Pat McGrath Mothership 5, the limited edition matte edition, the matte edition packaging. I love it. And also using my new Sigma brushes. And I absolutely adore it. Absolutely love it. As far as being able to go in there and get the looks and everything done. So what do you think guys? How did I do? <laughs> Now, being an oily girl, this is not something I have to do because my oils are already going to bring it through for me. But you get that really pretty look. Just a final dose, and there you go. And that is the final look. Thank you so much for sticking with me through the video. And thank you so much for watching the video and spending time with me today. Again, my name is Lynn and I am Beauty by Lenoria. Please go ahead and thumbs up this video. Go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and hit the notification bell so you'll know exactly when I upload each week. I do plan on doing three uploads a week. I want to go ahead and get on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. But we're about to see. But thank you so much, YouTube, for allowing me to spend a little bit of time with you today. And Bye. Have a great day.